be game change. I've been on vacation in the nude rodeo camp. Didn't have cable. Pop stars are crying. Comedians clutch their Xanax. <laughs> Trump is one. Cher says she's moving to another planet as if she wasn't <laughs> already living on one. Al Gore must be sobbing into his bowl of fried kittens. Identity politics is the 7-Eleven of self-esteem. A quick stop to become whoever you are. Instead of Shark Week, why not? Oh my God. And don't they remember how those celebrity videos before the election accelerated Hillary's defeat? They're the ex lax that finally cleared our political system of Clinton constipation. <laughs> so it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Greg's new book, The Gutfeld Monologues, Classic Rants from the Five, is officially on sale today. Greg joins us from D.C. to talk about his favorite nuggets of knowledge like you just saw. Greg? How are you? Hello, Charles. We have switched sides. <laughs> yes, we have. So I my... am usually there, and you are usually here. <laughs> yes, this is true. I, the accent, where did the accent come from? It's alarming. I don't know. I was just it's sitting here. It's his favorite here. accent. It's... It's, it is a good accent. It's a really bad British accent. Yeah, it's really bad. So, um, you know, uh, what I wanted to ask you about was, what is, what, of all of the amazing monologues you've given, do you know how many there are? Uh, uh, what, oh, good. What, what is your number one single favorite monologue? Oh, I, you know, that's like uh, asking... Um, it's like a, Kirk Douglas. your favorite child. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, I was going to say that. It's like asking Kirk Douglas to name his favorite child. He has like about 500 of them. <laughs> I think there's like a, I think I've done a thousand monologues. And I mean, the one I remember most is one of the ones for the montage, which was Terror Week, which was the idea that here we have a whole week devoted to sharks that do very little damage compared to what we're going through now with existential terror. Why wouldn't we do a week called Terror Week and it's every night highlight a different terrorist group so we bring home the reality of the real evil in this world, not some, you know, grim fish that we rarely see. I think the problem with that would be the, uh, there wouldn't be enough boat fo uh, footage. Yeah, because that's true. That's or, or underwater footage, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. But it was just so an idea. Nobody so, took it up. So, Dana, uh, my question to you uh, is, um, you know, with a lot of these uh, monologues get a little salty, and uh, and and I was wondering if you might, uh, might 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 want to point out some of the potty mouth stuff well, that, that that you think Greg gets away with. I, so, so Greg and I, um, we've been on the show together for seven years, and we sat next to each other not because I thought we would get along, but because we were the shortest. <laughs> Right. And it was the easiest way to light the set. And I don't know if, um, I, I, you know, I didn't know, Greg. And I, I guess I did want to ask you, is it annoying to you that I start laughing in the middle of your monologues? I just get a, such a kick out of it. And it is true, Charlie. There are times when there are things that I don't understand <laughs> and that I have to ask him about in the commercial break. Like butter sticks? But, it is, yeah, <laughs> butter sticks. but it really, uh, you know, your monologues are still my favorite part of the show. Well, the whole, you know, the, going back to when this started, the whole point of me being on the show was basically just to, at the end of the show, some comic relief, uh, uh, not really participate in anything else, but write this one little thing and, um, and provide some levity in otherwise, you know, serious news. And it kind of evolved, I guess, into, um, I don't know what it is. I like to think of it as like trying to, the monologues are me trying to voice something that everybody's thinking but they haven't articulated it yet mm -hmm. they might say it but they haven't said it yet so I, I always figure that each monologue has to be an unspoken truth that that i've i've i'm i'm helping to express so i think maybe that's why you laugh people laugh when they hear something that's in their head yes and i you think know what and, I mean? and if you think i would never have thought to say it that way Right. Uh, yeah, I think that if you're onto something there. Obviously, and it's I been am going preoccupied. Well. <laughs> I am preoccupied with certain kinds of, you know, you know, filthy things. So it's like, you know, like <laughs> potty you know, humor. Potty humor. Oh, I man. haven't grown up. Greg, uh, I have a question. Sure. This is Katie. I'm filling in today. Nice to see you. Hi, Katie. I do miss you being here, though. So, uh, when do you figure out how to write these things? Like, are you in the shower? Are you sleeping in the middle of the night and you wake up terrorized by your own thoughts and you have to? get on your computer and write these things? you write them by hand? Do you write them on your computer? I write, I, uh, I, you, generally what happens now is Megan Albano, the producer, will send me some options. And I like, I like getting options because I don't like to think. 
Oh. And, and uh, so if somebody says do this, I, I kind of like it, even if I hate the idea, it, especially if I don't like the idea, it, you, it's a fun challenge to create something out of something that wasn't there. I write it on my computer, it takes me 20 minutes. Then I go to the gym and then I'm on the stair climber and I have my uh, clipboard. I like the visual and, there. And I'm like, and so I'm on the <laughs> stair climber for an hour working on questions for the show, but also kind of reworking it. And then I edit the monologue all day. I basically rearrange the monologue constantly, which is like, seems like a big waste of time because it always ends up being back the way it was. <laughs> but that's kind of like, I'm a neurotic, I'm a, ne a neurotic person. All right, good to know. <laughs> Yes, as if you did not know that. <laughs> well, I love conservative humor. I, the, the fear I have, you know, someone coming from the left is, hey, a lot of conservative humor this day, these days is all about mocking, like skinning the lib, right, in front of the conservative audience. Or it's owning the lib. Owning, owning, owning the lib. <laughs> owning the lib. Is that owning, not owning, not That's skinning. what Nikki Haley said to those uh, high owning. school students yeah. the other day. You should know how that feels. Mark. Yeah, well, I, exactly. a little too I feel like mild. Jesse Waters when this is going on. You but know, Juan, so. where do you think the right learned it? They learned it from the left. The oh, left I don't think the, so. I think it's more of the left was the first group to make the political personal. I can't wait for your next book, which would be skinning Donald Trump. That's what I think is your follow-up. Uh, I'm not right. going to be skinning anything. I'm, 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 and I'm, I, what I'm interested in is finding the, the uh, unspoken truth and having fun with it, whether it's right or left. But it, you have to understand, it was the left that owned this territory for the longest time because to them, it was okay to mock because they felt that the person was necessarily immoral or, raw or, or evil, so you could say whatever you want. The right is now catching up. All right, Greg, if the president were to tweet something about your book, <laughs> what would you suggest he tweet? If President Trump were to tweet about my book, he, it should be, buy this book, it's amazing, and then he'd have to have a link there. Because it's very important you have a link. <laughs> Amazon would be good. He books a million. Amazon. Simon is just yeah. because I notice he never puts a link on it. Yeah, he doesn't like Amazon. Be careful there. That's, that's true. He won't do Amazon. Go to your local bookstore. <laughs> that's how he owns Congratulations, people. Greg. Yeah. All right, Greg. Thank thanks. you so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm on special report, by the way. Excellent. Oh, any, we, we, any tips? We will not miss that. Any tips? Be nice to Brett Bayer. Interrupt All right, can I tell you one more they thing? One more that. thing? One more thing? Can I say one more thing? Yeah. The green food here in the D.C. Bureau is not good. <laughs> oh, oh, and look at that. They were trying to welcome you as a friend. Right. No, they told me to tell you that. Right, <laughs> they told me to tell you that. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Next, a brazen heist to steal a shark caught on video has America asking, what were these thieves thinking? That's ahead. Okay, so the music for that was perfect. This next story is hard to believe, but it's true, and it's all caught on video. Surveillance footage captures the moment thieves at the San Antonio Aquarium snatched a shark right out of the water and actually wheeled it out disguised in a baby stroller. Police later busted the shark, naps, the shark nappers with two men confessing to the crazy crime. Thankfully, Helen the shark, that is her name, is back home and okay. So, Jesse, this is something I think that you would do, but I think you'd be too scared. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Not I mean, getting caught, but because of the shark. It's like a fraternity prank, right. I think, right? Yeah. Uh, I think we need to arm aquarium employees, right? <laughs> I mean, this can't happen. We need to batten down the defenses. We need to protect these sharks with all of the firepower possible. This was obviously a soft target. And we need to do a little bit better but job. But sharks have self-defense with their teeth. The funny, this is what the, the investigator said, that one of the men grabbed the shark by the tail when the other two people involved wrapped it in a wet blanket and wheeled it out. Wait, <laughs> put it what? in a bucket. Okay, <laughs> but was it a prank or were they just no. trying to stop no, it? No, 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 it. no and, and the guy, apparently where they found it, he had other, yes. uh, oh, lots of other aquariums. And, oh, and that's you, terrible. You usually think of like, like serial killers or crazy people, they have to operate alone because they can't get anybody else on their wavelength yeah. of weirdness, of strangeness. This guy had two accomplices with him, but uh, this is this is socialism right here. So oh, it is. It's, yes. it's, it's, socialism. Yeah, this is, this this is, is unbelievable. This is this is socialism on display, and oh, and, and young people should because uh, this was something that they needed. And it didn't, and, and, and uh, not, nothing is owned under socialism. You can there. just steal whatever you want. Well, I think that the, uh, if your argument would say we shouldn't have an aquarium so that young people <laughs> well, can go on it. 
So, and so, and watch a public aquarium and learn about sharks. But what amazed me about this was Jesse's response. Jesse <laughs> wants to arm sharks like they're not bad enough already. Well, no, arm aquarium employees. Well, oh, I'm I to pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> we should arm, first of all, kindergartners <laughs> and, and, and go to the aquarium and you got to face guns now. We don't want to I was the just kidding, Juan. No, <laughs> I might have gone over your head. But I must say, the uh, most amazing part of this was the baby stroller. Yes. Don't you think? Why and the they... wrapped in a wet blanket in a bucket thing. I, I think mean, that was the smartest idea. Yeah, the baby stroller. Really? How else are you going to yeah. carry it out? You know, what? I, I mean, agree. Carrying you can't put it in your tote bag. Well, oh, you could put it in any maybe, bag. Maybe a cooler. But a baby stroller, you know, it's sort of innocent, Dana. No, who wants? And then they denied the police the right to search the car. That was interesting too. But they I want to know that. why the woman. They're still deciding whether she should face charges. Well, uh, the other two are facing charges. Yeah, well, I think she should. The, the war on men. In case you're listening to the this. war on men. The war on men. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Yeah. War on sharks. Well, we that should too. say that Helen, the one and a half foot long horn shark, is doing just fine despite being taken <laughs> out. And, and imagine the tails she can tell. Uh, oh, imagine. Oh, Horny my. joke Tuesday. Fish One more thing up next. <laughs>